next is uh, the very almost important king ashoka the great so under his uh, rule only the magadhan empire or the mauryan empire it reached it reached its pinnacle right so he was a prince uh, of the mauryan dynasty uh, son of Bind uh, bindusara and uh, grandson of chandragupta maurya right good evening students welcome back to pluto science right today is our 61st day 61st day and today we are going to study about the magadhan empire so we will be here we will be discussing all the dynasties that ruled over magadha till the maurya dynasty so in the previous class when we were discussing the mahajanapadas we have i mean we have discussed that the all the rest of the we can say 13 uh, dynasties Uh, sorry mahajanapadas except the kambuja and gandhara kambuja and gandhara which were located at the northwestern part of the country so apart from that the remaining you can say 13 have been subsumed by magadha right so this process has started when the mahajanapadas were flourishing itself so one of the other one after the other they fell prey to the magadhan and uh, by the end of, by the commencement of the mauryan empire we will see most of these most of the mahajanapadas i mean for that matter uh, most of the mahajanapadas including other territories uh, they have subsumed they have been subsumed into the magadhan kingdom and only the southern portion of the country has left and it remained aloof from the mauryan empire so this has what, what uh, i mean what happened uh, i mean after the we can say mahajanapada period so we are going to study all the dynasties which are involved in the process and we are also going to study about some important kings and their we can say contributions or we can say the significance of those rulers in the process right so magadha it is also uh, i mean we can call it also all the kingdom of magadha it is a powerful i mean it has become all powerful powerful by the uh, we can say rule of the mauryas so here we can see the i mean in the beginning if you see the magadhan empire we can uh, see the its geographical we can say extension during the 6 uh, between the 6th and 4th century bc so gradually by the time of mauryas it has been uh, grown leaps and bounds we will also see that so rise to prominence of the magadha if you see it is uh, one of the several powerful states during the second urbanization period that is uh, the second urbanization period is uh, during or just before uh, just after the vedic period right so uh, in the beginning it was one of the 16 mahajanapadas right so during the second urbanization period that means during the we can say a uh, period after the uh, vedic age so first urbanization we will also have to know the urbanization period so first urbanization happened during the indus valley civilization time uh, second urbanization that uh, second urbanization that has happened during the mahajanapada period mahajanapada period and uh, <coughs> third urbanization we can say third urbanization has occurred effectively during the mughal period mughal period and the fourth observation uh, fourth urbanization we can say we are trying for it if you see the entire indian history the four urbanization you know very uh, well that during the rule of britishers so whatever the urbanization we had it has been kind of declined and the ruralization of the society has occurred and after the after achieving independence once again we are trying for achieving urbanization now we can say we are in the transition period towards fourth urbanization we are in the transition period towards fourth urbanization right so uh, the strategic location of magadha alongside ri river uh, ganges river so these have helped i mean the emergence of magadha as a powerful kingdom right so over time it uh, 
emerged as a powerful king, uh, kingdom because of the various factors briefly those factors are one thing is fertile land so it is located in the heart of the indo um, sorry ganga yamuna basin and uh, from the other side the brahmaputra basin so fertile land was available iron resources were amply available so here the iron ore mines in the we can say modern time also we find uh, most of the iron ore uh, we can say mine in the, this region bihar jharkhand and west bengal region so the closeness or proximity proximity of the iron reserves this also helped magadha so we, we were discussing avanti one of the other powerful kingdoms which is located uh, in the we can say Mad Ma madhya pradesh uh, region present day madhya pradesh period one of the major differences or uh, we can say lack of resources uh, when it come when we compare with magadha and avanti or avanti lacked the iron resources iron mine resources so because because of this it could not become powerful another thing is the forest also close to magadhan kingdom the forest so from the forest the magadha could capture elephants elephants so elephants so uh, uh, during that time elephants played a very very important role in the warfare so we can compare elephants with the modern day tanks modern day tanks so the elephants worked as the modern day tanks so magadha magadha had the availability of these two crucial factors one thing is iron resources so because of that they could exploit the iron ore and made military equipment with iron next thing they had huge supply of elephants this made the difference uh, for magadha when we compare with the another uh, we can say mahajanapadas especially the big and the powerful mahajanapadas like avanti right strong leadership also so uh, magadha could see a gla galaxy of strong and ambitious leaders uh, so because of that also that also magadha could become all more powerful right so this is uh, i mean these are the few factors which are contributed to the growth and development of magadha so if you see the various dynasties that have ruled over magadha are first one to start with is haryanka dynasty next one is sisunaga dynasty uh, after that is the nanda dynasty and the fourth one is the mauryan dynasty so uh, by the mauryan dynasty mauryan period uh, the magadha has become magadha empire has become all powerful right so these rulers from the haryanka dynasty itself people i mean the rulers have started capturing one mahajanapada after the other right so the two important uh, uh, rulers uh, who have started the expansion of magadha are one king is bimbisara and the other uh, king is agatha satru so after that shishunaga also uh, uh, i mean a powerful king was there shishunaga himself in the nanda dynasty one famous king is mahapadmananda he also contributed a lot for the expansion of the empire so haryanka dynasty if you see their timeline uh, they have i mean they ruled from 684 bc to 413 bc important rulers of our bimbisara and ajata shatru briefly udayan also ruled over but he is not that much prominent right so if you see their contribution they have expanded the territory they have provided strong administration and uh, they have uh, seen the rise of iron age technology and the growth of trade and commerce has also taken place during their time <laughs> right so we have to briefly study about bimbisara and his contribution in the expansion of magadha so key strategies uh, he has adopted for expansion of magadha are marriage alliances so he has formed a strategic marriage alliances with the neighboring kingdoms he married kosala princess kosala devi securing the crucial alliance military campaigns right so he was not in favor of military campaigns so one kingdom anga he has conquested uh, through the military warfare uh, after that diplomacy also 
so he had a lot of diplomatic skills played a crucial role in securing alliances with the uh, in the place of uh, prevailing conflict situations so he also uh, i mean contributed in establishment of rajagriha so he established the city of rajagriha uh, present day rajgir we can say he as the capital of magadha kingdom right. so this is about bimbisara next is very very prominent and important king ajata shatru so his rule is uh, approximately for uh, around 30 35 years 491 bc to 461 bc so uh, under his uh, we can say i the magadha expanded by leaps and bounds military campaigns and the conquest if you see so the conquest of kosala his most significant victory was defeat of powerful kosala kingdom ruled by his maternal grandfather only prasenjit right so this victory gave magadha dominance over vast region next battle with vijji avaji or vrijji so he waged a long and complex war against the vijji confederation uh, which was a republic known for its democratic i mean kind of democratic rule so while the exact outcome is debated magadha eventually gained control over the strategic city of vaishali all right so this is about the uh, haryanka dynasty and two important key rulers next dynasty is the sisunaga dynasty right so sisunaga dynasty if we see their rise to power right <coughs> so <coughs> the sisunaga uh, he it is believed that he is the founder of the sisunaga dynasty itself right he could have been a high ranking official or a military read, uh, uh, leader under the haryanka uh, i mean who has usurped the haryanka throne during the rule of udayan okay right so sisunaga he ruled uh, from uh, 413 uh, bc onwards other rulers there is limited information about uh, available about the other rulers however sisunaga was the most powerful ruler right so he also uh, contributed to the territorial expansion of the magadhan kingdom so he conquested avanti he captured avanti so the sisunaga kings they have conquered conquered the western kingdom of avanti they avanti which was also one of the major competitors for the magadhan empire right so this is about the sisunaga dynasty next important dynasty is the nanda dynasty right so it is the nanda dynasty ruled over the period of 345 to 322 bc so it was a powerful empire and ruled significant over a significant part of the northern india so it is because of this naga dynasty only and the power and the prowess of the naga dynasty and also the military strength some historians opine that alexander alexander the great so he was invading and doing incursions uh, at the western border of the indian subcontinent so because of the he has captured some small kingdoms at the western border of the country north western border and because hearing about the powerful ruler sisunaga uh, sorry the nanda mahapadmananda and uh, knowing about his military might some historians say that the alexander alexander the great he has uh, i mean withdrawn his withdrawn his ambi- ambitions of capturing uh, invading and uh, capturing india right so the smaller kingdoms uh, k- uh, kings uh, like porus uh, porus like uh, kings like porus they have given i mean troubled alexander a great uh, great uh, to a great extent so so the small kingdoms only alexander has to face lot of challenge but uh, i mean when it comes to uh, very big kingdoms like uh, kingdoms like magadha so alexander thought that he could not uh, have succeeded against these big big rulers so because of this reason he has withdrawn his ambition of invading india so some historians uh, put this kind of opinion right so rise to power of the nanda dynasty if you see right 
so they have likely over, overthrown the sisunaga dynasty and uh, so some sources say that mahapadmananda he was uh, from a non royal or even a lower social class person who has successful in capturing the power right so rulers uh, and administration if you see mahapadmananda he is considered the most prominent ruler in the uh, nanda dynasty right so several other nanda rulers are also there but they are not that much prominent right so nandas are credit- credited with establishing a strong and centralized administration they implemented efficient systems for tax collection law and order and the infrastructure development uh, they have also contributed for expansion of the military might so nanda empire known for its vast territory encompassing a large part of the northern india all right so they have also believed to believed to have conquered other neighboring several neighboring kingdoms so they have possessed a powerful military with a large army equipped with advanced weaponry and at that time so because of this reason only alexander withdrew his ambition of uh, invading india right so the nanda dynasty is also known for its economy and wealthy we can say wealth wealth and prosperity right so this is about the nanda dynasty right the last dynasty is the mauryan dynasty so by this time the magadhan empire has grown by leaps and bounds so the empire uh, the magadha or maurya empire is the first empire to unify a significant portion of the indian subcontinent so chandragupta maurya he is the founder of the uh, maurya dynasty he overthrew the nanda dynasty uh, around 322 bc and he became the king right so he also unified the regions that are uh, left behind after the conquering of the alexanders uh, alexanders invasion right so uh, you know very well it reached its climax or zenith during the rule of ashoka the great right so ashoka is known for uh, his kalinga war and after that kalinga war due to the remorse and uh, other things he has converts uh, his he has converted into buddhism right so if we see uh, during the Ma- maurya uh, during the mauryan rule the magadha reached its zenith and all these parts they have come under the control of the magadhan uh, sorry mauryan empire right so if we see briefly see the chronology or series of kings who ha- who are there in the magadhan empire first ruler is the chandragupta maurya 322 to 398 next is bindusara 298 to 272 and ashoka the great the most and prominent ruler uh, i mean not only uh, during that time he is considered as one of the best and foremost rulers in the entire history of india we can say he is one of the greatest we have in our we can say entire history all right 268 to 200 32 right next uh, after him a series of weak rulers have come so uh, for the disbandment of the magadhan empire so it is also considered as one of the reasons uh, after ashoka we see a weak a series of weak rulers uh, dasaratha he ruled from 232 to 224 uh, sampriti 224 to 208 brihadratha 208 to 108 bc right so brihadratha was overthrown uh, overthrown by kanva after that we we see kanva dynasty and one of the kanva rulers uh, he was the we can say senapati of the magadhan empire he overthrown the uh, mauryan empire right so we will briefly see uh, about each and every ruler uh, first three rulers uh, for that matter in the mauryan uh, dynasty so chandragupta maurya uh, so his uh, early life is shrouded in mystery so with the help of chanakya uh, also known as kautilya he has overthrown 
the nanda dynasty and uh, he established he started the maurya dynasty some say he chandragupta maurya uh, belongs to maurya tribe it is a not well known tribe so some say that he is no, he, he belongs from the maurya tribe which is na- not a kshatriya tribe right so he overthrew the nanda dynasty with the help of chanakya and uh, ruled started ruling magadha conquests and expansion if you see right so following the victory over nandas he embarked on a series of conquests expanding his empire westward across northern india he defeated remnants of alexander the great satraps and uh, in the northwest and uh, consolidated the power in the northwestern part and also he was successful in securing the northwestern borders right right so this is about the uh, expansion of magadhan empire under uh, chandragupta maurya so he established if we see the administration he established a well organized and decentralized administration with efficient systems for tax collection law and order and infrastructure development right so he also credited with establishing strong military and a network of spies for intelligence gathering historical texts like arthashastra attributed to chanakya they offer insights into the administrative administrative structure of the chandragupta maurya right so this is about chandragupta maurya next important ruler the ruler is bindusara he ruled from 322 273 bc right so also known as amitraketas in the uh, greek sources right so he was the second emperor of the mauryan empire right so rise to power if you see uh, he was uh, the son of chandragupta maurya and uh, likely received training in straight craft and military strategy during his youth right so uh, after the death of chandragupta maurya he came into power expansion if you see uh, he was uh, not a renowned conqueror right so he is credited with f- further consolidating what are the regions captured by chandragupta maurya he is credited with consolidating those regions right so there there are also some sources that he might have faced the challenges from the western territories but details are that much not clear right so administration and governance if you see bindusara is believed to have maintained a strong centralized administration established by chandragupta right he also relied on a network of officials and advisors to manage the vast empire right so uh, you know uh, you should also focus on another thing that so the bureaucracy bureaucracy also become very very important and it became very vast during the mauryan empire during the mauryan rule so because uh, they were following a centralized administration they were following a centralized administration so the uh, dependence on the government servants or civil servants was a huge during the mauryan period so they were doing all their work through the bureaucrats b u r g a u so now we say that we have overburdened bureaucracy or we can say excessive the size of the bureaucracy is very excessive but if you compare it with the mauryan period it is like very partly only so the mauryans were main, uh, they maintained very huge bureaucracy for the administration purposes right next is uh, the very almost important king ashoka the great so under his uh, rule only the magadhan empire or the mauryan empire it reached it reached its pinnacle right so he was a prince uh, of the mauryan dynasty uh, son of Bind- uh, bindusara and uh, grandson of chandragupta maurya right so kalinga war and conversion right so uh, you know about his kalinga war so kalinga was remaining the only kingdom remaining aloof at that time with the magadhan empire apart from the southern most kingdoms so kalinga he has annexed the kalinga and uh, due to the destruction and the death 
happened in that Kalinga war, he kind of felt remorse and he has converted into Buddhism. So Kalinga war happened in the 261 BC. Right. So after that, he has adorned the path of Ahimsa and the path of Dhamma. Right. So uh, expansion of empire, if you see, uh, Ashoka, Ashokan reign marked with shift, uh, shift in focus from military expansion to spread of Dhamma. He established pillars and edicts and inscriptions uh, in prominent Buddhist places to spread the concept of Dharma, the philosophy of Dhamma. He encouraged tolerance for all religions and focused on social welfare and infrastructure, infrastructure development. Right. So if we see the uh, brief contribution of Ashoka here, uh, spread of Buddhism, pillars and edicts, we will see a lot of pillar edicts and uh, rock edicts also we will see focus on peace and ahimsa also we will see ahimsa and dharma he has contributed a lot so this is briefly the contribution of ashoka so only territorial conquest uh, we see the conquest of kalinga and the subsequently he has uh, turned to buddhism and he sought a solace in the buddhism right so this is about Ashoka. Briefly, we will see Ashokan edicts. So, I mean, whatever the Dharma concept is there or Dhamma concept, he has, uh, apart from sending messengers, Dharma, Dhamma Mahamatyas to various parts of the country and also to other countries also, including Sri Lanka, etc. They were known as Dhamma Mahamatras. Uh, essentially, the messengers of peace and uh, messengers of Buddhism. So he has sought another ways by edicting huge pillars and there uh, the Ashokan, we can say, uh, edicts have been written on those pillars. So these are known as, these are known as Ashokan edicts. So broadly we can uh, divide the edicts into three I mean two types. Those are major rock edicts and minor rock edicts. So the purpose of these edicts is they were essentially public pronouncements intended to convey convey ashoka's message of dhamma right so not explicitly promoting buddhism the edicts emphasized the principles like non uh, non violence uh, are also tolerance and respect of respect for our li all living beings and also moral content like uh, like respecting elders etc right so they also highlight the ashoka's efforts to improve lives of people by promoting social welfare, social welfare, infrastructure development, and also religious tolerance. Right. So, if we see the locations of uh, Ashokan edicts, the edicts, uh, I mean, major rock edicts, they are uh, depicted in the black, and the, the minor rock edicts, they are depicted in white. So, Dhauli, Jaduguda, Amravati, Yerragudi, it is in Karnul district of present day Andhra Pradesh. Uh, uh, Sanauti, Sopara, Girnar, uh, Kandahar, Shabajgadi, uh, uh, Mansera, Kalsi, uh, Delhi, Topara, Meerut, Lumbini, Lauriya Nandargand, Kausambi, uh, Lauriya Araraj, and uh, Rampurva. So, here we will see the major rock edicts of Ashoka. Right? So if you see the minor rock edicts, minor rock edicts are also available at Eragudi, Kausambi uh, uh, and Meerut also, I mean below the part of Meerut, we will see some uh, minor rock edicts of Ashoka. Right. right. So the content of the edicts is Dharma, that is righteousness, non-violence, ahimsa, social welfare and also religious tolerance. Uh, remorse over the Kalinga war, we see, and also he focused on the governance aspects also. So locations, if you see, locations of the major rock edicts, if you see, Dauli of Odisha, Jaduguda, Odisha, Girnar in Gujarat, Supara in Maharashtra, Shatabdi, uh, Shabazgarh uh, in the Khyber Pakhtunkhwa region of Pakistan, uh, Yerragudi Pardo in Andhra Pradesh. So these are the locations of major rock edicts. 
right so if you see the minor locations of minor rocket dicks uh maski in karnataka brahmagiri in karnataka gujjara in madhya pradesh nittur in andhra pradesh and dauli in odisha dauli has also has major rock rock edict alto also uh, apart from that we have also a minor rock edict so if you see the geographical extent of these uh, rock edicts also they almost have uh, they are covering the entire indian subcontinent so with the with this you will also uh, understand the technology uh, also one thing you have to uh, remember that the pillar edicts i mean these inscriptions have written on the uh, specially crafted pillars they are very huge and big pillars so these uh, pillars have been uh, they have been created at only same place all these pillars have created at a same place around in and around mathura region they have been created but you see they have been transported across the regions almost they have been transported to each and every part of the country so you can understand the development of technology especially the communication technology at that time right so how efficient was the transport and communication facility right so we should not underestimate the technology available at that at that time also right so this is about the edicts of the ashoka so uh, this is about the uh, magadhan empire including the maurya empire also now briefly we will see two questions uh, that are asked from this topic first question it is asked in 2022 right question is consider the following pairs the pairs are dauli odisha irragudi andhra pradesh jaduguda madhya pradesh uh, ka kalsi karnataka question is how many pairs given above are correctly matched the options are only one pair only two pairs only three pairs only four pairs so correct option is only two pairs are correctly matched here the first and second pair right so dauli it is in odisha only correct erragudi it is in andhra pradesh andhra pradesh karnool district of andhra pradesh there we will find the major edict of uh, ashoka jadiguda it is in uh, not in madhya pradesh it is in present day odisha right uh kalsi if you see it is not in karnataka it is uh, in present day uttarakhand uttarakhand we will see the kalsi edicts of ashoka right so only two uh, among the given pairs are correct next question uh question is who among the following rulers advised his subjects through the inscription the inscription is who so ever uh, praises his uh, religious sect or blames other sects out of excessive devotion to his own sect with the view of glorifying his own sect he rather injures his own sect very severely so this is the edict uh, given by ashoka only through uh, ashokan inscriptions are often called as edicts so it is given by ashoka only uh, the correct option is option a ashoka so you can expect these kind of questions from this topic right so this is it uh, it for today thank you thank you for joining the class thank you